local, trusted. This is News 3 at 10 on KBTX. Bryan police are investigating a case of gunshots being fired early this morning. Nobody was hurt, but BPD responded to a call of two women who were fighting in the parking lot of an apartment complex in the 4300 block of College Main Street in Bryan. Gunshots were reported around 3 a.m. Police say a known subject fired multiple shots into the air. That person struck two fences while driving away, causing extensive damage. The suspect ran from the crash scene on foot and was not located. One arrest was made for an unrelated gun charge. 115 new cases were reported in Brazos County today, bringing our total of active COVID-19 cases over the 1,000 case mark. As coronavirus cases continue to rise, 26 residents are hospitalized and 34% of the active cases are 18 to 24 year olds. Active COVID-19 cases are climbing across the Brazos Valley with multiple counties crossing the 100 case threshold. Lee County was one of the counties that crossed the 100 case mark with a spike of 123 active cases from yesterday's 36. Robertson County also saw a jump in cases from 80 to 121 active cases. Well, after a rainy day yesterday, the sunshine returned throughout the first half of the weekend and made for an absolutely beautiful Saturday. And temperatures have been slowly dropping here across the Brazos Valley. Most of us checking in in the upper 40s to low 50s, except for folks up in Centerville checking in at about 39 degrees as of the 10 p.m. hour, 53 degrees here in Bryan and College Station. Now, I'll show you your temperature trend as we head into the next couple of hours. You'll notice we're really not budging a lot from where we currently sit right now. That's thanks to the fact that we are expecting more moisture and additional cloud cover to move into the Brazos Valley, which could lead to some patchy fog as some of us are stepping out the door for any early Sunday morning plans, as well as the chance to see some chances for rain before the sun comes up tomorrow. And that only leads to a bigger rain chance as we watch our next weather maker move into the Brazos Valley. We'll time that out coming up here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Mia. The Junior League of Bryan College Station hosted their signature fall fundraiser titled A Night of Giving Virtually Tonight. The event included entertainment, special guests, a raffle, and silent auction. The money raised goes straight to children in need in the Bryan College Station community. You can still donate and bid in the silent auction until noon tomorrow. You can go to the Junior League website and check out all their amazing and unique items they have in their auction. You can find some great gifts for everyone on your Christmas list. At the end of the day, somebody has to be there to speak up for the children, and we are one resource in many that's doing that. But again, it's the collective effort, the collective group. We're making a difference in the community. And some College Station ISD students will get a better night's sleep thanks to the generosity of several organizations. News 3's Donnie Tuggle was there as volunteers prepared to give the gift of rest to children in need. Many take for granted the luxury of having a comfy bed to sleep in at night but now 62 children can sleep a little bit easier. For a child to have a good night's sleep and have come, you know, wake up refreshed, prepared, going to school, feeling good, um, that's very important for their success as a student. Teresa Benden, Executive Director for the College Station ISD Education Foundation, says it was essential to make sure these students had a nice mattress to sleep on. This is our first time to do a mattress giveaway. Uh, it's the holidays. Uh, I think everybody's kind of in the giving spirit, especially dealing with all the COVID situations. So we're really excited to be able to help our students um, have a nice mattress to sleep on. Jared McLeod owns the sleep station in College Station. He says he was glad he could lend a hand. It's such an important time of year and it's such a giving time of the season. And, uh, you know, there's kids out there that need help and, and kids that need to, to be sleeping comfortably at night. And we're doing what we can to help them with that. Benden says they know they made an impact. I know the families are going to be blessed. I know they're going to be grateful and thankful. I'm sure the kids are going to be excited to get their, their goodie bags and their pillows and their blankets and their books. And uh, just to have a nice mattress to sleep on, uh, we're very, very excited to help those kids. In College Station, Donnie Tuggle, News 3. The College Station ISD Education Foundation says today wouldn't be possible without the support of many organizations, which you can find listed with this story at kbtx.com. The holiday season is here and a new event kicked off tonight in Northgate. The Howdy Holidays event happened at the Promenade in College Station this evening. More than 20 vendors were on hand for some local shopping. Some of them created as business ideas during the pandemic. There was also snow, a snow area on College Main and Santa also stopped by. 
a big push for us this year was to support local. Um, and so, you know, in doing so with COVID and everything, we were trying to think of how we can do that, um, but also making sure that we keep everyone safe. We also have people here that are local artisans who actually during the pandemic um, were out of work and needed things to do with their time and put their heads together and came up with new ventures of their own. Organizers plan to make this an annual event. Showers and a few storms possible tomorrow. Mia Montgomery has the details after the break. News 3 weather from the Pinpoint Forecast team is sponsored by First Financial Bank. Local bankers putting you first. And now, local weather. Well, the sunshine came back out for the first half of the weekend. It was an absolutely beautiful day across the Brazos Valley. Changes start to arrive as we head throughout the overnight hours tonight as more moisture pumps back into the area. And then as we watch our next weather maker move into the Brazos Valley tomorrow, that will give us the chance to see some widespread showers and the chance for a few rumbles of thunder as well. Now, that weather maker currently sits near the Four Corners region, already bringing some snow to some higher elevations for places like Colorado, even New Mexico, as well as the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles. And as we head into the overnight hours tonight and throughout the day tomorrow, that low pressure system and its associated cold front is going to push through the state of Texas. And because we are expecting more moisture to move into the Brazos Valley, that will give us the chance to see some widespread showers and the potential for a few storms as well. So we'll time it out here on your pinpoint forecast. As we head into the early morning hours of our Sunday, I think it's possible that some of us wake up to some areas of patchy fog. And we also have have the chance to see a few scattered showers before sunrise tomorrow morning. Then watch as I take you through the morning hours tomorrow for just how quickly pinpoint forecast really fills in with some of those greens and even some yellows and oranges, especially as we get a little bit closer to midday. Then we start to watch the arrival of that cold front push through generally in the early afternoon, and that is going to start to clear out that rain activity as we get a little bit closer to about dinner time tomorrow, where that activity then starts to sit a little bit out farther towards the east. Now, that being said, by the time all is said and done and this activity continues to push out of the area, I do think it's possible for some of us to find a few tenths of an inch to even up to half an inch with some localized totals a little bit higher in some areas as you go out to check your backyard rain gauge after the system continues to push through. Now, it is worth noting that we are not really expecting any severe activity with this particular system. The Storm Prediction Center has really issued that for the southern and eastern portions out of the Brazos Valley. But if we continue to watch any storms that do need a little bit more of that extra attention. I think we'll just be watching for a few isolated, stronger wind gusts, but that really doesn't look overly likely in terms of the thunderstorm activity. Speaking of the wind, though, after that rain really moves east of the area, that north wind is going to be pretty breezy as we head into our Sunday night. Wind gusts possible up to about 30 miles per hour, maybe even a little bit higher as we head into our Sunday evening plans. So go ahead and tie down any loose lawn items as well as those outdoor holiday decorations that you may have outside just because tomorrow night is looking to look pretty breezy before things look to calm down a little bit as we get closer to the time we are stepping out to start up the work week. It is worth noting also that Milam County has been uh, issued a wind advisory that goes into effect tomorrow at 3 p.m. and lasts until 9 p.m. on Sunday. And then after this front pushes through, we start to see a little bit more of that cooler air filter in. We will look more of a holiday feel heading into the beginning of next week. Some rain in store this week. That winter weather's in and out again. Thanks very much, Mia. That's all the news from us tonight, but stay tuned for Saturday Extra coverage with Tyler and John after the break. This is Saturday Extra Coverage, sponsored by Norman G. Tractor. It was another bye week for the Aggies. Welcome to week 12 edition of Saturday Extra Coverage. Alongside John Wilson, I'm Tyler Shaw. The Aggies were supposed to take on Ole Miss today in their final home game of the season, but COVID strikes again. This time, Ole Miss had issues in their program, so the Aggies will have an extra week as they prepare to take on Tennessee in Knoxville next week. The Aggies are fifth in the college football playoff rankings and next week's road match with the Vols will be their last test before the final rankings come out. Texas A&M has already had to miss a couple of games because of COVID-19 this year and the Aggies say their focus on strength and conditioning has helped them through this strange 2020 season. 
Well, we grinded them on that three-week layoff. I mean, I'm going to tell you that. We ran them to death. We practiced them. To, we practiced. I mean, they were full hard practices, like camp practices. We went right back at it and then uh, got our guys, you know, the normal game weeks like we do. And we go hard, man. Our, our practice during the week, our, our players always say the games seem harder than the practices. I mean, the practices seem harder than the games, and that's the way we want it. We grind them out. And I think that's something that um, we pride ourselves on and, you know, not only physical conditioning but mentally and, um, you know, having that stability and, um, uh, and that ability to maintain focus, composure, um, and confidence um, late in the game, uh, even when you're down or you're winning. The Aggies now have their sights set on that final regular season game next Saturday at Tennessee. The Aggies and Vols kick off at 11 o'clock on ESPN. Sixth ranked floor to take on, on LSU will be before the SEC title match with Alabama. Gator quarterback Kyle Trask is also in the Heisman conversation, but this won't help. Trask threw, tr threw that is, uh, two first half interceptions. Eli Ricks returns this one 68 yards for the touchdown. LSU led 24-17 at the half. Fast forward to the fourth quarter. It's a 34-34 game with two minutes to go. Florida gets a stop on fourth down. Looks like the Gators are going to get the ball back, but Marco Wilson called for unsportsmanlike conduct for throwing an LSU player's shoe, and that gives the Tigers a first down. They would go down the field and give Cade York a shot at a 57-yard field goal. And he makes it. It gives the Tigers the lead. Florida would go back down the field, have a chance to kick a field goal and force overtime on the final play of regulation. But Evan McPherson's 51-yard attempt, wide left, LSU stuns Florida 37-34. Stuns is the key word there. The Aggies opponent next week, Tennessee at Vanderbilt. Both teams trying to break losing streaks. Tennessee strikes first. Harrison Bailey finds Princeton Fant for a six-yard touchdown to go up 7-0. Vanderbilt would answer. Cam Johnson goes to Ken Seals for the TD, but then history is made. Sarah Fuller, who a couple of weeks ago became the first female to play in a Power 5 football game, well, she became the first female to score points in a game. She kicked the extra point right through the upright. The Wiley Texas product tied the game up at 7, but the Vols dominated from there. Bryce Thompson snags a one-handed interception, returned it to the house for six. Tennessee cruises 42 to 17. Number one, Alabama at Arkansas in their final tune-up before the SEC championship game. It's a 3-3 game in the first quarter when the Crimson Tide special teams make a big play. We're used to seeing Devonta Smith catch touchdown passes. Here he takes a punt back 84 yards for a TD. Bama led 10 to three after one quarter. Najee Harris had a pair of touchdown runs in the game. This one covers five yards, gives Alabama a 24 to three lead. Brian Robinson Jr. finished with three touchdown runs in the game. As a team, the Crimson Tide ran for 216 yards. Alabama will head to Atlanta next week for the SEC title game, 10 and 0 on the season after today's 52 to three win over Arkansas. Couple of ranked conference opponents. Number 25, Missouri, hosting ninth ranked Georgia. Bulldogs already up 7 0. JT Daniels goes over the middle to James Cook, who speeds his way 37 yards for the touchdown, and it's a 14 0 Georgia lead in the first quarter. But Missouri would answer. Larry Roundtree muscles his way into the end zone from, the, from one yard out. That'll tie the game up at 14 apiece in the second, but it was all Bulldogs from there. Daniels finds George Pickens on a slant in the second half. Pickens turns that into a 31-yard catch-and-run TD. Then Zamir White will find a hole, takes it 43 yards to the house. Georgia scores 35 unanswered points to win 49-14. Auburn and Mississippi State meeting tonight. This one's still going on at last check in the fourth quarter. Auburn up on Mississippi State, 24-10. And coming up after the break, we'll check in with the Big 12 plus Army-Navy playing their historic rivalry. And the College Station Cougars started their postseason run and are rolling into the area round of the playoffs. You're watching Saturday Extra Coverage on News 3, sponsored by Norman G. Tractor. Well, the high school football playoffs are well underway. Last night, Franklin punched its ticket to the 3A Division II state title game. The Class 5A and 6A by district rounds kicking off this week. Huntsville able to advance last night and now 
College Station begins its playoff run. The Cougars' quest to get back to the state championship game begins at Cougar Field as College Station hosts Sherman. Second quarter, Sherman looking to fight back from a 7-0 deficit. Tate Bethel goes to the air. His pass is picked off by Jackson Slanker. College Station would turn the turnover into points. Roderick Brown takes the handoff, finds some running room, and he is off to the races. Brown scampers 40 yards to the end zone, pushing the Cougar lead to 14 to nothing. Sherman would get the final points of the opening half. Late in the second quarter, Bethel hooks up with Xavier Miller. That's good for a 37 yard touchdown pass. College Station would lead 14 to seven at the break. Cougar offense going back to work in the third quarter. Marquise Collins scores from two yards out. College Station led 28-14 going to the fourth quarter. The Bearcats would hang in this game. Bethel able to buy some time. He goes back to the air and finds Benji Omayabu in the end zone. The 23-yard TD toss cuts the lead to 31-20. College Station answers that with a Brown 25-yard touchdown run. His third touchdown of the game pushes the Cougar lead to 38-20. College Station goes on to beat Sherman 38-26 to advance to the area round of the playoffs. We've got a lot of young guys playing, and uh, they got their first playoff game in today. Got one under the belt, and I think that's big because uh, it is different. I don't care how you look at it, it's different. Even though you're playing home, playing afternoon game, it is a playoff, so uh, that's big for the, the, those kids. But everybody else, I think, too, it's, it's uh, you know, you, you, you win in advance, and, you know, it's, it's just tough. It, it's tough when you get to this point in the year, so uh, proud of the kids and proud of uh, having some good, uh, good grit the second half. Cougars will take on Denton Ryan next Friday at Waco ISD Stadium in the early round of the playoffs. Kick off for that game, scheduled for 7 o'clock. Allen Academy back in the TAP State semifinals for the second straight year. The Rams beat Marble Falls Faith Academy tonight 54-22 to advance to the state title game next Friday. They're going to take on Lake Hill Prep. In the Big 12, Baylor hosting Oklahoma State. This one all Cowboys. Second play of the game, Spencer Sanders able to buy enough time to find Dylan Stoner. That connection is good for a 75-yard touchdown to put Oklahoma State up 7-0. The Sanders to Stoner connection works again later in the opening quarter. This time it's a 15-yard TD toss to push the Cowboy advantage to 14-0. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Sanders and Stoner strike again. This time for a 40-yard touchdown pass. Stoner finishes the game with eight catches for 247 yards and three touchdowns helping Oklahoma State beat Baylor 42-3. TCU closed out their regular season today with a 52-10 win over Louisiana Tech. Horn Frogs finished the regular season 6-4. One of America's most storied rivalries, Navy and Army battling in West Point this year. Not a lot of offense in this one, but Navy does get something going to start the second half. Xavier Arline runs for 52 yards, but Army makes a touchdown saving tackle and then a goal line stand keeps the midshipmen off the scoreboard. Army then scores the only TD of the game. Tahir Tyler takes it up the middle on the keeper, take a 10-0 lead in the fourth. The Black Knights would then add to that lead. They bust up this Navy trick play and get Mark Walker down for a safety. Army goes on to win it 15-0. Former Texas A&M head coach Kevin Sumlin was fired from Arizona today. Sumlin had a 9-20 overall record with the Wildcats. Arizona is 0-6 this year and on a 12-game losing streak dating back to last season. Sumlin coached the Aggies from 2012 to 2017, and he's been with Arizona the past three seasons. Coming up, we'll check in with the Aggie women's basketball team as they get set for another home game tomorrow. And the uh, Aggie men's basketball team on the road in a tough one in Fort Worth, and we'll have those highlights after the break. Here are tonight's winning lottery numbers, sponsored by Hinson Brand. We deliver for free. You're watching Saturday Extra Coverage on News 3, sponsored by Norman G. Tractor. The Texas A&M men's basketball team has started the season hot, winning its first three games of the season at Reed Arena. Well, now the Aggies hit the road for the first time this year for a Lone Star showdown in Fort Worth. Over at Dickey's Arena, the Aggies take on TCU for their first Power 5 opponent of the season. First half, Aggies go to Emmanuel Miller down low, who spins and he'll finish with a soft touch for two of his 10 points, and then within four. But the Horn Frogs answer, RJ Nembhard finds Kevin Samuel wide open underneath for the two-handed jam. 
Then Emhart with a no-look dish to Mike Miles. Gets the layup plus the foul. Miles had 12 in the first half. Horn Frogs up 42-21 at the break. Second half, AM's defense going to offense. Hassan Diara finds Quentin Jackson, who lays in two of his team high 12. Diara with another steal, and he'll find Jackson again. This time he'll hammer it home with a one-handed slam, but the Horn Frogs were too much in this one. Miles is going to throw it up to Charles O'Bannon, who finishes at the rim. TCU cruises to a 73-55 win. I hope, honestly, that it's a wake-up call for everybody, um, including myself. I, I can't put all of this on the players. It has to be on our program that collectively we've got to start trending in the right direction on the things that we know correlate to what we want to be about. Uh, definitely a wake-up game. This was our first uh, uh, Division One Power Five school that we played. Uh, it's a good test for us. I think it'll it'll help us down the road once we play uh, bigger and better teams. Uh, we'll learn from this for sure. Now the Aggies return to Reed Arena for a Tuesday night game against Southeastern Louisiana. The Aggie women's basketball team back in action tomorrow. The Aggies have started their season five and zero and a perfect 3-0 on the road. A&M returns to Reed Arena to host another undefeated team, Abilene Christian. Well, they're coming in 5-0, so you give them respect. They're picked second in their league, I think, behind Stephen F. Austin, and they're always up there. What we've got to do, I'm not going to be able to get 14 kids in every game, despite no matter what the score is. So what I want to do is be able to balance it. Tip off between the Aggies and Wildcats will be at 5 o'clock Sunday at Reed Arena and it will be televised on the SEC Network. In high school hoops today, the Navasota boys won 63-49 in Caldwell. Cameron Yo beat Troy 95-43. Snook beat Leon on the road 66-48. On the girls side, Hearn moved to 9-2 on the season with a 13-point victory over Mildred. Brazos Christian won the consolation bracket at the Ovilla Tournament beating Parker Tarrant by 10. Bremond fell to Holland 39 to 31 and Snook beat China Spring 51 to 28. Nagy football is going to be back next week for their final regular season game and a week from tomorrow. John, we're going to find out uh, playoff, final playoff rankings and the fate for AM football. Yeah, again, season. the big shocker tonight. Number six Florida goes down at home to LSU. We'll find out how far they fall. The next set of college football playoff rankings come out on Tuesday. Again, the Aggies trying to get in that top four. So next weekend they play Tennessee. It's conference championship weekend, Tyler. So all of this is going to sort itself out. Lots to look for these next couple of weeks. That's going to do it for our Week 12 edition of KBTX Sports SEC. We'll see you tomorrow.